In this video, we're going to go over how to draw resonance structures and specifically how do you know when there is resonance. And this is a skill and so skills don't come easily oftentimes in chemistry. It's going to take some time. So just understand that heading into this. Okay, so one clue is that you have delocalized uh, lone pairs of electrons next to a double bond and that would be a clue that you have um, resonance. So here we have these lone pairs of this nitrogen that can go and create a double bond, but because that arrow alone is not good enough because that would allow this carbon to have five bonds and we know that that's not going to happen, we can kick out the delocalized electrons in the double bond and put them on the adjacent carbon. Okay, if we have something like this with these lone pairs, which we, you could call them delocalized, that's fine. There's no double bond here to kick out, and so those truly don't have a place to move to. Another clue is that we have a positive charge next to a double bond. What can happen is we can move the electrons in a double bond, they are delocalized, towards the positive charge. So we get resonance arrows that look like this. We get something like that, okay? So what we wanna do is I'm just gonna do some examples. I'm not gonna do all of the examples here. Um, one thing I don't want you to think though is that you always just have one additional resonance structure. You could have lots of resonance structures and so we'll see that here. Okay, in A we have a positive charge and then we have uh, delocalized electrons in a double bond. So I'm gonna move those towards the positive charge. I'm gonna get something like this. I'm gonna look at C next. I'm gonna do the same thing. I did not touch this double bond, so that double bond will go there. We'll put a positive charge there. And what's kind of weird is with a lot of these, you can keep going. The same pattern exists. This double bond could move there. Notice how I'm pointing it directly at the bond to say that it's gonna maintain as a bond. And now we get something that looks like this, okay? So we could have lots of resonance structures. Another clue is that we could have delocalized electron pairs next to a positive charge, which is um, very similar to here Double bonds are delocalized electrons, but this is specifically lone pairs I'm talking about. So what we could have is something like this in A, where these go and create a double bond there. And when you do formal charge, it checks out. The nitrogen becomes positive with four bonds, but zero lone pairs, and that matches our rule of getting to four. We could have the same thing happening here. That one is actually making it neutral. This is a very stable structure. And then don't forget, you gotta be able to know when lone pairs exist that we could do something like this. And those are all resonance structures. So let's practice drawing some resonance structures. I want to do A, B, and C here, and they're all different. So in A, our last set of notes, this will not be a terrible thing. The, the compound given in A is going to be our most stable resonance structure. Why? Because it's neutral, okay? It has no charge. So one way is that when we have what's called a carbonyl group of C double bonded to O, that equals a carbonyl, we need to be able to um, create a charge. So first thing I would do is draw all your lone pairs on your heteroatoms, and I would start your resonance structure with this arrow, okay, on your carbonyl group. 
What this does is we are going to move a lone pair of electrons onto that oxygen. It'll be negatively charged. And then this carbon is losing electrons, and so it'll be positively charged. What that allows you to see now is some charge. And with charge, we can move on and we can start moving some double bonds around maybe. So here, we're going to move double bonds towards the positive charge. And then this carbon at the end, that terminal carbon, ends up losing electrons, so it'll be positively charged. Notice that we are neutral here. Here we are neutral. We have charges, but they cancel out, so we're overall neutral. And here we're overall neutral, okay? And so we're one of the earlier notes we wrote down that we're going to maintain our overall charge with no matter what. So when I do B, when I draw my next structure, I better have just a plus charge, just one plus. Okay, now as you do B and C, you want to make sure you know the difference between the two of them, okay? In B, we have a positive charge, okay? And in C, we have a negative charge, and the arrows will behave a little bit differently, okay? So please make sure you understand the difference. We are going to move electrons towards the positive charge. We keep our single bonds intact, and then we can actually... Uh, do that again. I'm going to draw the arrow like that. Okay, and so overall, we get something like this. Negative charges, on the other hand, are electrons, okay? Positive charges are the absence of electrons. Negative charges, we have a lone pair of electrons. And so we're going to start there. We're going to create a double bond, but in order to create that double bond, we have to kick out the adjacent double bond. So make a note to yourself, when you move Okay, you're going to have two resonance arrows, and that's totally different than a positive charge. Okay, let me jump around here. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's look at F. Sometimes we're neutral and we know we have the best resonance structure like we do in F, and um, we need to create some charge. So another way to create some charge is to take we have a localized, we've got delocalized, is to take a delocalized set of electrons, create a double bond, but kick out the adjacent double bond, okay? That, all of this is a little bit weird at first. And notice my arrow is pointing at this carbon, so we're gonna put those lone pairs of electrons on that carbon. We did not touch these double bonds, so they stay put. And we can go through doing this process. And it gets very tedious. And notice on my last one, the structure I get, you might say, hey, that looks an awful lot like my starting structure. And I say it does, but it's not the exact same. Okay, notice that the double bonds in the benzene ring have shifted. Okay, I'm going to jump ahead to notes four, and I'm going to specifically just look at some problems that we have here. Okay, so let's look at H. We have a positive charge. We'll move electrons towards a positive charge in a double bond. And we can do that again and again. So we get something that looks like this. 
Okay, one arrow for our positive charges. In F, we have a negative charge, so the negative charge is gonna have two arrows, and we're gonna create a double bond and then kick out the adjacent double bond. And this gets awfully annoying because we've got this big ring, and we've gotta keep going around the ring until we don't have, or, in, or until, I should say, we would end up repeating. And I believe we're almost there. Okay, and then that would circle back to where we started. And those were some messy arrows, so I apologize. Um, in B here, we're neutral, so we've got to draw in those delocalized lone pairs of electrons. And we just... create a double bond and kick out the adjacent double bond. And we can do that again. So that's what's important to recognize about negative charges and delocalized electrons. And that'll be positively charged. Okay. Let me look to see if I can find any more that I think are extra tricky. Okay, let's look at F. And then we'll look at I, and then those will be the last two. So what's weird about F as I go through and I do this is that we are going to enter the ring with our negative charge. And we're also going to exit the ring. And for whatever reason, that is weird the first time you see it or do it. Okay, so the negative charge enters the ring and exits the ring. And then in I, again, we have positive charges here. I can be a little bit tricky because if this is a test or quiz, then um, what I'm going to get a lot of, and understandably so, is this. Let me make sure. But there's one more. Don't forget that heteroatoms, even though we might not draw or their lone pairs might not be given, they still do have lone pairs most of the time, and that's delocalized. And so what we could do is get one more structure. That looks like this. And when we get to our last set of notes here, notes four, that would be the best Lewis or the best resonance structure because it has the most bonds. Bonds, forming bonds, if you've taken AP chemistry, you know that that releases energy and uh, low energy states make things more stable. Okay, so that would be actually the most stable resonance structure there.